All right, so another example here of graphing a rational function. Suppose we want to graph x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. Okay, so again, let's think about the domain of the function. The domain of this function, x squared minus 9, would be um, all reals except when, basically when the equation uh, uh, x squared minus 9 except for when that equals 0, because again, we don't want to divide by 0. So, well, x squared minus 9, I could factor that as x minus 3, x plus 3 equals 0, and our domain would be all x's except for positive 3 and also negative 3. Okay, notice a couple things as well. Um, Notice if we plug 3 back into our original formula, we'll get 0 on top. We also get 0 on the bottom, again, which makes it undefined. But if we get 0 over 0, remember what that means is we just have a hole in our graph. Notice if we plug in um, negative 3, well, in the numerator we have negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. Again, in the denominator we get just 0. But remember, if you get a, a non-zero number over zero, that's going to mean you have a vertical asymptote at that point. Okay, so a couple things I think uh, uh, to keep in mind. So there's a hole in the graph at x equals 3. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Notice our original function, too. We could actually simplify this down. Uh, we have x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. Well, the denominator just factors as x minus 3, x plus 3. We could cancel out the x minus 3s, and we would be left with 1 over x plus 3. So what that tells me is I'm really graphing the function uh, g... I'm graphing the function, we'll call it still g of x, uh, 1 over x plus 3. But we also have to remember that there's a hole at x equals 3. Okay? I mean, if we just started with the function 1 over x plus 3, there would be no problem by putting 3 in. Um, we would end up with 1 sixth. But again, we have to take the original function into account, and uh, it would be undefined at 3. So all to me it says is, it says, hey, Patrick, graph 1 over x plus 3, but just remember there's a hole at this x coordinate of 3. Well, remember 1 over x is just kind of our, our function that kind of goes down, you know, in the bottom, in the, in the third quadrant, and it's kind of also hanging out in the first quadrant. Remember, if we replace our x with x plus 3, that's going to shift it 3 units to the left. And again, that's where we said our vertical asymptote was, was at negative 3. So there's our vertical asymptote. So let's see, g of x equals 1 over x plus 3. So again, just to figure out the hole in the graph, I plug 3 into this. Um, if I plug 3 in, we would get 1 over 6. So 1 over 6, we'll say that's right there. So this is the point that's missing from our graph. It would be 3 comma 1 sixth. But now it's just got this same basic shape to it, except everything's been shifted over a little bit. Um, let's see, if we plug 0 in, we would get 1 third, which would be a little higher. So obviously it looks a little, looks a little bigger than 1 third here, but, uh, so not quite to scale. But otherwise it has just the same general shape to it. So the graph would go up, it would go through its y-intercept. Again, at this um, x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 1 sixth, we'd have a little open circle. And then um, it would still be kind of hanging out uh, in this in this bottom left region, so it would go down to negative infinity, and then it would uh, level out at the x-axis as you move to the left. So, again, basic idea: we just take one over x, we just moved it three units to the left. We had to uh, make this uh, uh, recognition that there would be a hole at the x-coordinate of three. Well, if the x-coordinate of three, what would be the y-coordinate? Just plug it in, make the hole there, and then you've got uh, you've got your graph.